the worst year for a lot of us for our mental as well as physical health. So joining us this morning is best-selling author, coach, and fitness expert, Lisa Goldenthal. Hello and welcome, I'm Lisa G, your host. You're at the top of your game, yet the game is changing faster than ever. Strategies that got you here aren't the ones that'll keep you here. The pressure is relentless and the fear of obsolescence looms large. That's why I'm here. Welcome to the new podcast series, Disrupted. How to be gritty and unlock performance. This is your chance where I sit down with today's top or experts in business, mindset, wellness, and success to help you master disruption and thrive. Thanks for coming and I'll see you soon. He's an international keynote speaker, best-selling author, CEO and host of the top rated podcast, Flow Over Fear, helping people to embrace fear, realize realize their ultimate potential in leadership and life. After overcoming alcoholism, unhealthy habits, he reframed his anxiety disorder into a superpower, becoming a top amateur triathlete, inspiring leader, CEO of a multi-generational business that he helped grow to nine figures. He was featured on NBC sports series, Iron Man, Quest for Kona, which chronicled his successful attempt to qualify for the Ironman World Championship in Hawaii. His best-selling book, Shifting Gears from Anxiety and Addiction to Triathlon World Championship, is available on Amazon, Audible, and wherever books are sold. I am so excited to welcome to the podcast, Adam Hill. Hey, how are you? Good. To, thanks for having me, Lisa. This is exciting. Oh, I enjoy all the times I get to talk to you. And (laughs) I really love your topic of channeling anxiety into a superpower because I myself have felt that way many times. So Mm -hmm. why don't you share that superpower with our audience here? Yeah. So I, 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 for about the first three decades of my life, I experienced anxiety daily and my, uh, you know, my, the theme of my my life back then was running from fear was anytime I would experience fear, I would try to push it down, try to suppress it, get away from it so that I didn't have to feel it. The problem of course was, and the problem is for most of us that in order to experience this life or the joys of life and the thrills of life, we have to experience some of that fear. A lot of times I just wasn't feeling it. My world started getting a lot smaller and to the point where you know, I started drinking to cope with that anxiety disorder and the fear, everything that I had. Um, but when I got sober and when I recovered from alcoholism, I discovered a new perspective on my fears. And that was that that was the truth that, you know, we do experience fear as human beings. Fear is often a signal for danger. Yes, that we, we might be in danger, but when we're not in immediate danger, fear is still a signal for us. Fear is a signal that we are pushing up against the edge of our comfort zone. And when we push up against the edge of our comfort zone, often what we want is right on the other side of it. So it's actually telling us what's beyond our comfort zone and that we might need to pursue it. So that's the way I've looked at my life for uh, about the past 15 years. And and it has changed everything for me. So that's kind of how fear can be a superpower. So when you're feeling it, you know, maybe maybe lean into it and get curious about it instead of immediately running or fighting it or, you know, or, or any of those things, just get curious about it first. I love that point about getting curious because asking yourself questions is such a good way into figuring out where's this coming from? What is it? And I liked how you said that things you really want are on the other side of fear and your comfort zone. So to push through fear and do the hard things mm-hmm. is something we all have to learn to get into what you call right behind your head. I don't know if you guys can see this, but blow <laughs> over fear. Let's jump into the better way to get yes. in the flow because we all are going to feel fear and we need to do it anyway. Do the Absolutely. Thing. Yeah. So flow, I believe is the opposite of fear. I mean, a lot of people, like if you think about what the opposite of fear might be, you might think fearlessness. 
But when you truly think about fearlessness, nothing is more frightening than fearlessness. Like you think about somebody who's fearless, you know, they're, they're, uh, uh, they don't have that sense of fear. So they actually put themselves in danger. There's nothing more frightening than that. So right. I think that when you actually rise above fear, when you actually learn to use it to your advantage, that's when you start to remove it as an obstacle. And when you remove obstacles in your life, you create flow. It's like a river. Like when you have like down trees or rocks or boulders in the river, it creates rapids and they're obstacles and it obstructs the river from flowing. When you remove those, uh, the river flows much more uh well, it flows better. And, uh, and when it does that, that's kind of like life. That's kind of like life. When you face fears, when you can remove fear as an obstacle, instead of seeing it as an obstacle and you can flow through it, you experience that flow a lot greater and uh, flow for me. What I believe flow is, is it's just the perfect, uh, combination of, of your, of finding your passion, finding that joy, finding what fills you up when you're aligned with your values, when you're aligned with the things that fill you up and, uh, and you can pursue them even though it scares you a little bit. Um, so flow is a, is a great idea of what we can try to pursue instead of leaning into that fear or running from fear. I love it. So we're asking ourselves better questions, removing obstacles so that we can flow through them rather than deny them. There's nothing worse than denying that stuff is even happening. Is there? Right. No. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, we have to be honest. I think honesty and vulnerability about where we're at is so important. And it's important that we meet ourselves where we're at because that will show us where the next step is. If we know where we are and where our destination is or where we want to go, even though there's a gap between where we are and where we want to be, the beautiful thing about that is, is we have a, a starting point and we have a destination. If we can meet ourselves where we're at, we can take the next step that puts us in the direction of where we're going. Well, Adam, I love all your spin on reframing fear and anxiety because I know we've been in such a disrupted world. That's mm -hmm. why I launched the podcast on being unstoppable. And this particular podcast series disrupted how to be grit and gritty and unlock performance. So how can we face our fears for greater leadership and business impact and success? Yeah, it's a great it's a great question because in business and in life and and wherever we're you know wherever we're participating in in this world that has been gifted to us, we're going to experience life being thrown at us in a variety of ways and ways that we might not like. So there's a lot of things that we can control and a lot of things that we can't. And a lot of times when we put ourselves in the situation of wanting to pursue big things, and I'm guessing the listeners here are like you know probably want to pursue really great things or in the process of pursuing great things. A lot of times we, we throw ourselves right into it with everything we have. We put yeah. ourselves at the red line right away. And when we put ourselves at the red line right away and, and just give everything we've got right away, we don't give the capacity to absorb the stuff when life happens. So a lot of times the reason we fall short or we, fail or we we don't succeed at that is because we don't give ourselves room to to absorb the stuff that get the other stuff that we don't know about that gets thrown at us so in leadership i think the good idea is is to throw aside the idea for your for yourself and for your teams that everybody needs to give 110 percent all the time that is disastrous advice Right. Uh, because when we do that, we don't have the capacity to do it over time. Your 110% loses its force and your, your 110% will ultimately be everyone else's 60%. But instead, if you start by giving 80%, giving yourself the capacity to think, to rest, to do the things that you need to do, then your capacity will grow over time. Your energy will grow over time. Your team's energy will grow over time. And that 80% ultimately will turn into everyone else's 110%. So that's one piece of advice is when you're pursuing things that really fill you up, don't dive in with everything you've got, give 80% consistently, and then you'll see those results coming. Uh, that's kind of the art of discipline that comes with flow. Flow is, is it, it, flow. part of flow is being able to get into the discipline of the things that fill you up. Discipline requires that you stay consistent. We all know that. Discipline also requires that, uh, um, that, uh, uh, that we, you know, pursue it, pursue something that is filling us up. But what people neglect about discipline is the fact that you have to slow down. 
A lot of people think discipline is just stay consistent and do it as hard as you can. No, because then you're going to succumb to the end of your willpower. But if you slow down, you actually give yourself the capacity to stay disciplined, to gain that sustainable effort. And that's how all of the best in the world become the best in the world at what they do. That's how they practice discipline. Well, I want to take advice for you because you've grown your company and completed this world championship Ironman in Kona. I mean, for those of you that don't realize that is an entire whole day of exercising, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's a, yeah, it's it's the longest, it's it's the most grueling and longest uh, single day endurance event in the world. But there are multiple multi day events which are just crazy out there too. But uh, yeah, it's it's a long day, and uh, I think it's a great that Ironman is a great uh, metaphor for life. Really, is is about giving that eighty percent consistently. That's really where I learned a lot of that. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm building this endurance. I'm getting faster. I'm I'm building strength. I'm doing all of these things not by giving everything I've got all of the time, but instead by by slowing down, by giving eighty percent consistently, and being consistent with it growing the capacity. And that's how you're able to do those full day events that people often say, I can't believe you did that. And I don't know how you do it. That's really how it's done. Well, I am super impressed with all of the accomplishments. Last question that I have for our listeners that I wanted to ask you about was something that we had already talked about, about not really like denying that something's happening. So you want to get into the flow over fear. And then what do you do when you have to acknowledge something, not just with yourself, but you have to also then have difficult conversations with family members and team so that you can keep going at that 80% flow level. Yeah. Those, those, those difficult conversations uh, are difficult, are hard. I mean, they, they, and they're not easy for me either because I, I had, I've always had a fear of confrontation. And uh, so that was not an easy one to get over, but really that is one of those elements in life that you have to, you have to learn by immersion. You have to have the courage to do it. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about giving 80% in the rest of the time is it gives you the capacity for that when you have to deploy like that additional effort or push into that additional that, that additional thing that might be super uncomfortable, like a hard conversation or a, a challenging decision or a move in a different direction. Well, then you can do that because you have the additional capacity to do it. And that's kind of that additional part that it's just a surge. It's like a, a, an action surge that, uh, um, that you have the capacity for. Uh, so my, my advice there is to lean on faith, lean on whatever higher power that you have, which is such an important element in my life, um, to give you the, the, the additional strength you need to do it. And then at that point, and only at those points, give that, that 110% effort that you know that you can give. Um, and, uh, and make it worthwhile and make sure that you give yourself rest, give your, you know, give yourself some grace afterwards. Those hard conversations aren't easy that you come out of them with battle scars. You come out of them with bruises and all of that stuff, get the rest, recover from it and, uh, and give yourself some grace in the process. I love all of the grit that you exhibit and the grace and the flow over fear and the courageousness because having those difficult conversations and accomplishing great things certainly takes courage. Are there any final wisdom bombs you want to leave our audience with on grit, resilience, and high performance? Yeah, I, I really think that um, ultimately the fear that we feel in our lives or the limiting beliefs, the things that are holding us back really fall into three core ca categories or three root causes. And they are uncertainty. We're uncertain about something in our lives. We're overwhelmed is the second one. So we feel overwhelmed, some, you know, too much on our plates. Or we uh, doubt ourselves. We, we have self-doubt and that leads to us uh, uh, not, being, not thinking that we're enough to be able to pursue what we want to pursue. And so when we narrow it down to those three things, regardless of how many different fears we have, whether it be rejection, failure, success, whatever those fears are, when we can categorize them into those and name them, I think that's an important first step in in moving forward and starting to 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 uh, uh, rise above them, because when we're suppressing the fear, when we're fighting against it, we're we we're not acknowledging it as real. And the first thing is we we acknowledge them as real. If we can name the fear that we have or the limiting beliefs that we have, that's really the first step towards rising above them. And when we do, 
then we can start to pursue the opposite of those three things, the uncertainty, the overwhelm, and the self-doubt. We can start to pursue conviction, discipline, and incremental growth. All of those three things are the superpowers to that anxiety, that fear that we can use to grow and become our best over time. Well, that's why I wanted to have this amazing conversation with you, Adam. I appreciate all the wisdom you're dropping on the audience here. We've all been disrupted. We're mm -hmm. all facing failure and fear. And this flow over fear is such a great concept. I know you have a gift for our audience, don't you? Yeah, I do. I, I um, uh, If you go to my website at adamcliffordhill.com, there's a section where you can download a, a vision setting uh, guide, which is... It's uh, uh, I have a I have a guide to a two day solo retreat that you can do on your own, uh, meaning that you go you go camping, you go to a city that you like or somewhere that you just want to go that's away from your home and you start reflecting on the previous year, or the previous quarter. And I have some prompts, some journal prompts on how you can how you can reflect on the year and celebrate the wins and and learn what you want to do to pursue that. And then the next day, of course, you will look at the vision where you can uh, where you can visualize that bright future for yourself and then narrow it down to the set of priorities that you have for that next quarter and even the next week and the next day so that you can begin to pursue that with the discipline that it requires to get there. So it's, it's basically your roadmap and you do it, you accomplish it in two days in a, in an adventurous setting for yourself. Uh, you can find that at adamcliffordhill.com. Um, and, uh, uh, and yeah, just, just find the place where it has the vision reflection retreat and, uh, you can download it there. Well, I love visioning and the power of creating a vision. I'm going to be going to your website, Adam Clifford Hill. I know we connected on LinkedIn. Is there any other place where people can find you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That what my website is one of the best ways. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram where I drop a lot of dad jokes um, at the Adam C Hill. Uh, that's where you can find me and on uh, YouTube. That's where you can find flow over fear. My, uh, my twice a week podcast uh, where I, uh, where I interview a bunch of high achievers. So uh, my YouTube is at, uh, if you just do YouTube slash at Adam C. Hill, that's where you can find me. Thank you for being a great guest, Adam. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it.